On this week's In Cycle, we look at the history behind Ghent Fevelgem. You have uh, gravel, semi-gravel zones, which gives a spectacle, combined with the history, this great history of the Plug Streets. We go in search of a Belgian cycling superfan. Normally, I come on TV uh, seven or eight times each each uh, races, and uh, after the race, I'm always looking or it was good or not good. But first, we go back to 2009 with Edvald Borsenhagen. A familiar face in the pro peloton for over a decade, Edvald Borsenhagen has some big results on his Palmares. But as his first and so far only cobbled classic victory, his triumph at the 2009 Ghent Fevelgem is one that remains especially significant to the Norwegian. Uh, I was uh, really early in my career, uh, second year as a pro, so I was riding there actually to help my team and uh, try to do my job as good as possible. It was a really strong team, but uh, I was young and uh, just want to race and <laughs> take my opportunities. There was uh, a lot of wind and uh, you had to be in the front to be ready and that's what they sort of said in the bus as well in the morning. Luckily I managed to be in the first echelons and uh, took it from there. With many of the pre-race favourites caught out in the crosswinds and only one man up the road, Bossenhagen saw his opportunity on the second ascent of the famous Kemmelberg. It's uh, really steep and of course it's on cobbles and that day it was also raining so it made it slippery so you need to sit down and be powerful in your legs and then uh, just pedal hard. <laughs> I felt obviously quite strong that day when I was attacking on Kamenberg and uh, could uh, make it across to him. I was just racing in my instinct. Well, I've never actually been looking so much at riders or teams, especially earlier when I didn't know a lot about the team, so I was just riding and and having fun like I still are. I respect every rider, but I didn't really pay attention to who they are most of the times, and I just raced and tried to be at the front and not think about what they achieved. A lot of races also lost because they tried to race and save too much, so I was happy that he was also committed and wanted to ride a lot. As Bosenhagen ploughed on up the road, teammates Marcus Burkhardt and George Hincapie were proving invaluable in the chasing group. It's always important with a good team and a good teammates that can help out from behind and not block the roads in an unfair way, but just not commit to, uh, to riding. It's a nice feeling when you ride together as a team. In general, it's it's uh, something special. It feels even better when you have, if you win yourself or somebody else on the team win. But if you have committed and ridden well together as a team, then it makes the victory even bigger. I don't know really what went through my head in that sprint. It's, uh, I think I'm quite known for having a long sprint, but that was maybe one of the longer ones. <laughs> I 
Maybe it's not the perfect sprint in tactic wise, but when you win, it doesn't matter how, how you win if it's a nice way to win. I was just crazy happy and yeah, I think my arms went a bit uh, <laughs> everywhere in that celebration. But uh, well, I think it's just good to show how happy you are and not think about any how you're going to look on camera or whatever. It's it's nice to celebrate. The winner of today from Colombia, Kairo, it's quite a long time ago now, but I'm still mentioned a lot and uh, it's nice to be one of those riders and I hope I can be able to show what I can in uh, the years to come and hopefully I can come back and uh, do some great results in Gantwell again and also of course all the other classics. Genf Evelgem is a race with a rich history, but its historical significance is undoubtedly dwarfed by that of the roads and fields that it passes through. In 2017, the gravel roads, known as the Plug Streets, were added as a reflection of the race's intrinsic link to the First World War. We are standing here uh, close to the Christmas Truce uh, Memorial. So during this war of four years, uh, almost five years, we had uh, one day of peace, with, which was uh, the Christmas day. So uh, the Germans start singing, then the English start singing, then they take uh, the white flag, they, they change the presents, and they play the football. And this, this happened here on this, you can say, sacred ground of uh, Black Street. The name Plug Street is also derived from the city, Plugstedt, which is also the native city of our Belgian champion VDB, Frank uh, van der Broeke. And now it was so obvious that if you have these semi, semi gravel roads, that uh, we could name it Plug Street as a, uh, as a memorial, as a, as a, as a contribution to uh, the identity of, of the race. It's uh, Gent Weverham in Flanders Fields. Here, in this region, in this neighborhood with the Prague streets here, the, the race matches completely with the identity. You have uh, gravel, semi-gravel zones, which gives a spectacle, combined with the history, this great history of the Prague streets. We have uh, integrated three Prague streets. Every uh, proper Prague street has his proper identity. So the first Black Street is, is uh, called Hill 63. 63 because it's the altitude. And at Hill 63 you had a perfect view on the trenches of the Germans. So that's why it's called Hill 63. That's the first Black Street. Then you have the second one, is Christmas Truce, because the start of the second one is close to, it's, it's at, at uh, 10, 20 meters of the, of the memorial of Christmas Truce. Then you pass the memorial for the missing. There is about 12,000 soldiers who are missed, who fought in the hillies, we, the cobbled hillies of Camel and this neighborhood. And then in the forest, we have the third Black Street, and this is named the Catacombs because under the Hill 63, there are catacombs made by the ANZAC, so Australia and New Zealand. So this is a bit the, uh, what happened 100 years ago. And with our race, we are happy that you can be a kind of ambassador for Flanders Fields, so uh, we never forgot what happened here uh, 100 years ago. And the Plug Streets are not the only way the modern route of Ghent Vevelgem honors the memory of the Great War. Ypres, it's really uh, it's a very impressive uh, city. And I think uh, the passage there, close to the Flanders Fields Museum, through the Mining Gate. And the Mining Gate in the past, it was the gate to the hell, because it was the gate where all the soldiers passed to go to the battlefields of uh, Passchendaele. And now it's the gate to the final of the race. 
So uh, you know uh, when now the races they know when once they pass it uh, past the mining gate it's uh, quite a straight line. You have also Camel of course. Camel it was defended by the, the French uh, army. So uh, at, at really at the foot where the cobble started at, and the steep hill, the second hill there the cobble start. To the right side you have the Osterer with more than 5,200 um, French soldiers buried in a mass grave. And then at the top you have the monument of the French country and uh, it's called uh, Victoria. And the people call it here an angel because she has the wings. It's uh, the goddess uh, Victoria, but she's there to guard the soldiers. For us it's really uh, amazing that we can be the ambassador Besides the race, also ambassador of the World War I. The terrible things happened here 100 years ago, but yeah, we can never forget this show. It's really um, happy as maybe not the right word, but we are quite uh, proud that we can help. Tune into Flemish races and you're certain to see a few things. Cobbles, hard racing and enormous crowds. Look deeper into those very crowds and you may notice a familiar sign. And chances are you'll see it over and over and over again. Last year, InCycle searched far and wide across Belgium to find that person and their banner. And they found him, a man known to cycling fans simply as Luke. We are in uh, Herersbergen, we are in, uh, in Flanders, in uh, Oost Flanderen, not so far from the Muur of Herersbergen, the Bosberg. Everybody in, in Europe knows the tour of Flanders and especially also the, the Muur. Until 2011, it was about 15 km of the end of uh, the race. Now it's about 100 km of the end of the race, uh, while the end is now in Odenaarde and not more in Ninov. In Gerasbergen, cycling is the most important sport of, of all. I am born here in Gerasbergen as a uh, about uh, 57 years old. The Luke sign has been visible during some of the most iconic moments of the Tour of Flanders over the last 16 editions. Yet Luke van Steenberg himself has been hoisting some sort of banner aloft at races for even longer than that. The story all begins with an idea to promote his now ex-wife's flower shop. In 97, the championship of uh, Belgian cyclocross was here in Gerasberg. And we have a little shop here in Gerasberg and it was the, the moment for doing that. We have make a banner from uh, his shop. And yes, after, after this day, uh, a lot of people uh, came to the, to the shop. Uh, it was uh, very good for, for the, the flowers. When I separated, uh, I couldn't go with the, this banner, and then I took an, another banner. I painted uh, three letters of uh, book, but it was the same uh, colors of, of the other, and everybody knows immediately that it was from me. And so a legend was born. As the name Luke became more and more recognisable at the Cobbled Classics, a fast-growing Belgian team spotted an opportunity. Ten years later, uh, the group of Wanty Group Coubert is coming from me, uh, asking, uh, yes, you, do you want to uh, do something for us, uh, for the riders, and uh, to support for the riders, and 
Yes, now I'm a great support of uh, this team. We are here to have the recognition of the parcours of the Omloop at Niesblad. The first course in Belgium, the overture, is always a little stressed. And for us, it's very important. Luc is a bit of food cyclism. So he's always a supporter of us. He's going to follow us now with his moto. C'est un supporter à 100%. For the team this year known as Circus Wanty Gobert, having such a dedicated fan has its upsides. Escorting his favourite team around the race recon on his trusty scooter, Luke offers security and his trademark encouragement to the riders, all while scoping out the conditions and roads for his own race across the Belgian countryside come the weekend. I uh, know all the little streets here in the area, and uh, yes, Google Maps and also the roadbook is very important. More people go to the races with the cars, and I do it with my scooter. It's the only way to go from place A to B. It's also important that the days before, it's don't rain too much, otherwise the parts are not uh, with, good with, uh, for the scooter. Eh? Here in the area of uh, Flanders, the, the streets are closed about 10 minutes uh, before a race. To go to the Paris-Roubaix, we see the races uh, five times, maybe. And in Tour of Flanders, you can see them uh, 10, 15 times. Uh, and you have luck. With so many stops and such a distinctive sign, Luke's presence around a race isn't something that goes unnoticed by the riders. He's everywhere on the, in the parkour because he's also from around, so he knows the roads, he knows where to cut the roads. Uh, Sometimes you can see him like 10 times in one race, whereas uh, normal people can maybe watch the riders three times or something. I do only for amusement as well and for support for the riders. Today I can help the riders and yeah, it's so important for me can, that I can do that. It's like my first school day today, uh, the first race. Uh, uh, this year, uh, yes, uh, I'm nervous. N nervous like the, the riders. I hope uh, about uh, 10, 11, places to go to do uh, and I hope that uh, riders of the team are in front. For the third stop of the day it's time for Luke to hit the cobbles and the first chance to grace the world's TV screens. While he waits for the riders, there's even time to catch up with old friends and reminisce about times things haven't gone so smoothly on race day. Three years ago, we were passing by and Frederick said, like, just ask him if he knows the way and if we can follow him. So I opened my helmet and I said, like, excuse me. And he was so surprised that he was actually steering sideways and he fell off the mobiclet. Now 
Roman V, I come on TV uh, seven or eight times each each uh, races, and uh, after the race, I always looking for it was good or not good. Each time I come on television, my uh, yes, my my phone have a, have a message. With the passing of the peloton, it's time for Luke to start his mad dash across the Flemish countryside. Defying the cobbles, crowds and headwinds, Luke manages to loft his banner some ten times throughout the course of the race and to make it to his final stop with seconds to spare. When I dare with my banner, I find an, a little bit also a, a racer. I hope uh, doing five years, then I stop. That's it for this edition, but do join us next time. Until then, keep up to date on social media.